And if you can ever get to that place to where you believe that you are healed independent of any carnal verification, then the healing will manifest itself. But most people are taking all of the things that we're saying. And man, Daniel and the team here, they just pour their heart out every week. We teach on healing. There are people that come over and over and they take all of these things, but they do these things hoping that that will cause healing to come to pass instead of believing that you're already healed. You need to get to a place that honestly, what God's word says is sufficient. And if you never saw the physical manifestation, that, that's not what we want. It's not glorifying God for us to do that. But I'm saying you ought to get to a place to where you are so established in the fact that I'm healed that whether it ever manifests itself or not is a secondary issue. I don't know how to explain that exactly, but you can reach a place to where, you know, God, you know, I've given this example before, but there was a woman that had a huge goiter on her neck. And she went to a, a camp meeting type of things and they prayed for her. And this woman got up that night and she told everybody, I was healed. And she had this huge goiter on her neck. But you know, people understand that sometimes it takes a brief period of time. Jesus spoke to the fig tree and cursed it. And it was 24 hours later before it dried up from the roots, Mark chapter 11. And so people understand sometimes it takes a brief period of time. So when she got up and testified that I'm healed, even though they could see this huge goiter on her neck, everybody praised God and said, that's great. Next year, she came back to the same conference and she got up and says, it's been one year ago tonight that I got healed of a goiter that was on my neck. But you could still see the thing. And people, you know, were put off by that and thinking, man, this woman's testifying that she's healed, but anybody can tell she's not healed. And, but they didn't say anything. Then the next year she came back and she said, this is the second year anniversary of me being healed. And she, you could still see the goiter. And by this time, people were beginning to get upset and say, this is not right. This woman's saying that she's healed when anybody can tell she's not healed. Finally, she came back the next year and she says, this is the third anniversary of my goiter being healed. And she, you could see, she still had it. People could see it. And finally, they just had all they could take. And so they talked to the leadership and they said, you got to stop this woman from testifying that she's healed when anybody can tell she's not healed. So the leaders went and talked to her. And anyway, that night she prayed and she says, Lord, I know you healed me and I believe it. But these people, they don't believe that you've done anything until they could see it. Would you please take that thing away so that they could believe that I was healed? And the next morning she got up and the water was totally gone. And she got up and she says, I told you I was healed. <laughs> Amen. That's the way you got to get that I'm healed. And I don't care what it looks like. And I can guarantee you, you'll even have well-meaning people come by and say something if they can see or see a physical manifestation of you not manifesting healing. And the whole world system is just built to get you back to going and being controlled and dominated by what you see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. There's people that because they don't have any money back in their bank, they'll say, I'm poor because their relationship is broken up, you know, that I'm just a failure and things haven't worked. And that is not the truth. There is a spiritual you. There are spiritual realities that you can't see, taste, hear, smell, or feel. Now, I do believe that when we get into faith and start walking in that, that there will be evidence of it. I'm not saying that you get to where you don't want to see a manifestation of it, but I'm saying that if you wait until the manifestation before you start believing, you're going to never see the manifestation. You got to believe that you receive when you pray. You still got your finger here in Ephesians 1? Well, I'm eventually going to get back there maybe. But look at this in Mark chapter 11. This is after Jesus cursed the fig tree and he told us we had to believe that we receive when we pray. Mark chapter 11 verse uh, 24 says, Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Notice the order here. You have to believe that you receive when you pray and then you shall Future tense. It might only be a minute, five minutes, a day, a week. I don't know, but there is a future manifestation. You believe you receive right now, and then you shall have it. And you've got to believe that you receive before you see it. 
And yet there's a lot of people, even people that call themselves faith people or whatever, that are actually going through the motions and confessing, but they are doing those things, hoping that they will be healed. And they don't really believe that anything has happened until they see it, until they feel it, until a doctor verifies it. Which again, I'm not against doctors, but doctors are carnal. All they're going to do is just look in the carnal room. They can't tell you whether you've got the same power inside of you that raised Christ from the dead. And if you wait for a doctor to verify that God's word is true, you're going to miss it. Thank you for that thunder silence. I know that I'm getting personal now. Some of you, most people try healing. And if it doesn't work, then you go to the doctor and try that. That's good. And again, I'm not against that, but I'm saying, man, why don't you leave the doctors for the sick people? Why don't you believe, leave them for the people that don't know God? Amen. I'm not against doctors, but man, if you believe that you're healed, you don't have to go that route. You don't have to do all of those things. You can believe that you're healed. You know, there are some people here that'll remember just, I think it's only been two years ago or something that my ear manifested a healing. But I know Daniel and some of the people here uh, saw me for six years. I had a melanoma on my ear. I never went to a doctor and got it confirmed, but I've got a doctor on my board who went out of his way to tell me every year that you're, you got a melanoma, you're going to die if you don't do something and stuff. And I had this thing and it, it would ooze blood and stuff like this, and I just believed I was healed. And honestly, I don't know why it took six years. A lot of it's because I wasn't that concerned over it. It wasn't that big of a deal. I didn't have to look at it. It was all of you that had to look at it. <laughs> when I look in the mirror, I don't look at the tip of my ear. I don't know. Maybe you do, but I don't. I very seldom saw it. I just forgot about it. I knew I was healed. And anyway, a couple of years ago, it finally dried up and everything's good. And everybody, oh, you're healed. And I said, I told you for six years I was healed. <laughs> and I believed I was healed the whole time. It didn't look like I was healed. Amen. And maybe I didn't do it the best. Maybe I should have given more time to it. I don't know, but I'm just saying that, you know what? I believed I was healed and it took a while for me to see the healing. But I, when I finally saw it, it wasn't like, wow, it worked. Yeah. It was like I believed it worked six years before. I was just wondering about why it takes so long to manifest, but I knew that I was healed. And that's the way I am. I've got things I'm believing for right now. And you know what? It's better than it was, but it doesn't bother me. I'm healed. I know that I'm healed. I'm not trying to get healed. So back in Ephesians chapter 1, he prays a prayer for him. And he says in verse 15, he says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, and that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Notice how he's praying. This is really significant. I've thought about this a lot, that if the Lord was to tell me that you're going to write a prayer that people 2,000 years in the future would be reading, how would you pray? And I can tell you based on the fact that I've heard lots of people pray and I've been to churches and I've, I've been in meetings where they're praying for people. The vast majority of Christians today would be praying something like, oh God, pour out your spirit. Oh God, send revival. Oh God, do a new thing. Oh God, touch them. And most of our prayers are trying to get God to do something. Look at Paul's prayer. His prayer is, God, open up their eyes to what they have. It's not, God, you do something. It's looking and saying, Father, help them to understand what they already have. That is where the vast majority of Christians are missing it. They believe God can heal, but they don't believe that he has healed. And so they go through all of these things, trying to get healing to come instead of believing that, Father, you've already done it. I'm healed. 
And I don't care what I feel like. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what anybody has to say. I was healed. That's my testimony and I'm sticking with it. And once you get to where you believe that, and I mean believe it from your heart, then your body will follow. The spirit is much more important. Most of us are wanting our body to manifest the power of God. And then our spirit, our emotions will latch on to it and say, yes, amen. But it's just the opposite. And so he's praying that God would just open up, give unto them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And look at verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Man, look at this. The eyes of their understanding. You know, if you study this word out, the word understanding here is the Greek word dianoia. And it's the exact same word that was translated imagination in Luke chapter 1. I believe it's verse 51 and other places. This is talking about God helped them to see with their heart that they're healed. Open up the eyes of their understanding. Let them see with their heart that they're healed before they see with their eyes. Man, that is huge. You know, I've given this testimony so many times. I think I gave this last time I taught in healing school, but it just fits. I've heard it a hundred times and I still like it. So I'm going to do it again. But there was this woman who had poor eyesight and the doctor, I mean, the uh, uh, optometrist, you know, gave her these uh, glasses that were like the bottom of a Coke bottle. She was legally blind. And there was a healing evangelist coming to her church so she wanted to avoid him because she'd been prayed for so many times and been disappointed that she didn't want to go through that again. So she avoided him. But the last night of the meeting, he cornered her and he finally said, I want to pray with you. So he made her take her glasses off. He prayed for her and he says, now can you see? So she started to open her eyes and he said, shut your eyes. And this woman just shut her eyes like, how can I tell if I don't open my eyes? And he said again, he says, now can you see? So she started to open her eyes and he said, shut your eyes. And she shut her eyes real quickly. And the third time he says, now can you see? So she started to open her eyes and he says, I didn't tell you to open your eyes. You got to see yourself seen before you see. And finally she understood what he said. So she kept her eyes closed and she prayed in tongues. And finally she says, I can see it. I see myself seeing. And he says, now open your eyes. And she opened her eyes and she was completely healed and her eyes were healed. But far too often we have people come forward and they're going to get prayer and then immediately they open their eyes to see if they're healed. Immediately they check their body to see if they have a pain. Immediately they run to the doctor to get a new test to see if they're healed. And they are looking for the healing to come from the outside, but it comes from the inside. You got to believe that you're healed. You got to see yourself healed before you see yourself healed. You got to walk by faith and not by sight. And then the next verse, it says in verse 19, and what he's praying that your eyes would be open to what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, accord, to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and on and on it goes. He's praying that your eyes would be open to the power of that is already in you. Again, most people believe that, oh God, you've got the power. The doctor says he can't heal me. The, the doctor can't do anything, but God, you can do anything. And we just put it all off on him. But he has placed this power on the inside of you. It's not out there. It's inside of you. And you've got to see this. Your eyes have to be opened. To recognize, I've got raising from the dead power on the inside of me. I've got the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Did you know if, if you could somehow or another gauge the displays of God's power, creation is awesome. But I guarantee you, raising Jesus from the dead is greater than creating the heavens, the universe, the earth, you and me. 
The greatest display of God's power ever was raising Jesus from the dead. Because when God created the heavens and the earth, there was no opposition. Satan wasn't fighting against him. There was no resistance. But at the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, every demon in hell was standing there to prevent that, trying to stop it. Satan had Jesus in his grip. He actually went to hell. And Satan was doing everything he could to hold Jesus back, and he couldn't do it. The greatest display of God's power is when he raised Christ from the dead. And this says, open their eyes to the exceeding greatness of the power that is in them. Not out there available to them, but in them. The exceeding greatness of the power that's already in us, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. You have raising from the dead power on the inside of you. And yet the average person approaches God like to ask for this healing. It's a big deal. We're really tapping God out. This God, I know this is hard. If you approach your healing that way, the doctor says it's stage four cancer. God doesn't give a rip if it's stage one cancer, five, six. It doesn't make any difference to God. I have people come and say, I know that God heals. I've heard people testify, but does God heal AIDS? Like that's, that's bigger. That's incurable. Nothing is hard for God. Did you know it doesn't take any more power from God to heal cancer than it does a cold? Did you know the doctors can do more for cancer than they can do for your cold? Many of you hadn't thought about that, but you can't heal a cold. You can dry up your nasal passages, but actually if you take medication, I've read medical things on this, that if you take medication, the cold virus will stay in your body longer. It actually slows your body down. You can deal with the symptoms and you might get some relief from the symptoms, but the cold virus will stay in your body longer if you take medication than if you just sat there and fought it in the natural. You might be able to deal with the symptoms, but they can't do a thing to heal a cold. You can't heal a cold, but they can cut out cancer. They can irradiate cancer. There's things that they can do. Cancer is actually more treatable than a cold. But you know why people feel differently about it? Because a cold won't kill you. And so they aren't as afraid. And that's the thing that makes cancer worse is the fact that people attach fear to it. People attach unbelief to it. This is incurable. This could kill me. And it's your fear and your unbelief that is the problem. It doesn't take one more ounce of the power of God to heal cancer than it does a cold. But the problem is you think differently about cancer than you think about a cold. And it's that thinking. It's your level of unbelief, your level of carnality that elevates this to being hard. If you understood that you had the same power on the inside of you that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, and that's more than enough to heal cancer, to heal your hangnail, your headache, your sugar diabetes, whatever it is that you're dealing with, if you ever understood that, I guarantee you, it would be just a short period of time until your body was reflecting the healing power of God. But we just don't know what we've got. We don't realize what we've got. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I got a word for you today, and that is that you're already healed. It's already done. You don't need to get God to heal you. God is looking for you to stand up and believe something that you can't see, taste, hear, smell, or feel. He's looking for people that will just stand up and say, I'm healed. And I refuse to be sick. If you could accept what I'm talking about today. Now, there's a lot of other things that are important in manifesting your healing. But this is so foundational. And I'd say one out of a hundred or less actually have this attitude. The vast majority of people are just totally going by their feelings and how they feel and they will say and they'll do things and they'll come up in a prayer line and they'll let you pray for them hoping that they'll get healed. But not pray to agree that I, hey, I'm already healed and I just want you to agree with me and we're going to turn on these symptoms and stuff like that. There's not very many people that have that attitude and that's why not everybody manifests a healing. Once you understand this and once you believe it, there's a lot of things that you can do. In uh, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. 
So if you truly believe that you've been healed and that you've got raising from the dead power on the inside of you, it's not enough to just believe that and acknowledge it, but then you need to act in agreement with that. And so stand up, man, and the faith of God, the power of God is voice activated. So what you do is stand up and say, man, thank you, Father, that I'm already healed by your stripes. I was healed, 1 Peter 2, 24. And the scripture says that death and life are in the power of my tongue. So cancer in the name of Jesus, I curse you. Amen. I'm already healed. I got this raising from the dead power on the inside of me. And so I use this power and I curse you, cancer. I command every cancer cell in my body to die and get mad. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I thought we aren't supposed to be mad. You aren't supposed to be mad with people, but it's fine to be mad with the devil. I was in a church one time preaching along these lines and the pastor stopped me and said, we don't even get mad at the devil around here. And I said, no wonder you got problems. You should be mad at the devil. It's okay. God gave you the capacity for anger, not to get mad at people, but to get mad at sickness, to get mad. at Why am I, boy, I'm stirring myself up. I hate sickness. Amen. I hate sickness. And not just sickness. I hate weakness. I hate inadequacy. I hate all of this kind of stuff. This is not how God made us to be. And I'm telling you, the vast majority of people in my ministry that I see heal, it's because they get this attitude that I'm talking about, and they just get angry and stirred up. And instead of asking God to do something, they start believing God has done it. He's given this to me. And they turn on those things. And that's when they see the devil flee. You resist the devil and he will flee from you. And I can guarantee there's people right here in this auditorium right now that you are praying for healing, you desire it, you long for it, you cry, you beg, you scream, but you don't believe that you're already healed. You don't believe that you have power to do anything, so you are passive. You're like in the back seat. Would you please take me to this place? And you're always begging to go someplace. You need to get in the driver's seat. You need to start taking charge and saying, hey, if God's already healed me, I'm not staying this way anymore. If you were healed, then why are you so passive? Why are you waiting on God? Why are you coming here desperate? I have people come up to me by the thousands and they want to tell me how bad their situation is to impress on me the hopelessness, trying to get me to feel pity so that somehow or another that'll move me. And it does just the opposite. What it says to me is that you don't have a clue, that you don't know what the Word of God says. You know what? I don't have people come up to me and say, hey, I know I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. I am healed, healed, healed. I know it. But man, I'm still struggling with some symptoms. Would you agree with me? I don't have people approach me like that because the people with that attitude are healed. But I have people by the thousands come and tell me how bad it is and just hoping that somehow or another I will give them something that they don't have. I don't have a gift of healing. I've seen people raised from the dead, two people in my own family. I've seen lots of people raised from the dead. I've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears open. I've seen awesome miracles, but I don't have a gift of healing. I just know what the Word says, and I know how to pray, and I know how to take my authority. If you've come here for me to get you healed, and you're looking at me, you're going to be disappointed because that's not my ministry. There are other people, you know, Daniel Kalinda that uh, Daniel talked about. He's one of those guys that has a gift of healing. Matter of fact, I was talking to him just a year ago or so, and Daniel was talking to me, and they see crusades with, uh, I don't know, I, I don't think I'm misrepresented to say that they have a million people at some of their crusades, and they'll have 100,000 people born again, and they will see, uh, I don't know, dozens, hundreds of people miraculously healed because he's got a gift of miracles, and God uses that. But Daniel was asking me, how do you just believe for a healing? <laughs> he doesn't know. And I was sitting here teaching him how to just stand and believe. They're two different delivery systems. You know, if the only way that you could get healed is to understand what I'm talking about, to grow in the Word, to get mature, and to renew your mind and get to where you aren't carnal, but instead you're believing what the Word says over what you feel, that takes time to renew your mind. And if that was the only way that you could be healed, 
than if you came forward today and got born again, but you had a terminal illness and you were only a week away from dying. You'd just be destined to die because you hadn't got time to renew your mind and grow and understand these things. So because of that, God has people in the body of Christ that do have a supernatural gift of healing and you can come and get healed off of their faith. Not with, it, it's, you can't do it in 100% unbelief, but it takes minimal amount of faith. What I call a passive faith instead of an active faith. You can get healed off of another person's faith if uh, they're strong and you aren't. And so God can do that, but it was never, never, never intended that this should be the way that the body of Christ received. This is a stopgap measure for you. You know, if you've got, if you're already in a crisis, if you've only got a week to live or something, it's a, it's a temporary way of God dealing with things until you get your mind renewed and start exercising the power of God that's on the inside of you. And because God loves you so much, he will heal people like that. But that was never intended to be God's method. The way that all of us should receive healing is for you to renew your mind and recognize you've got the same power living on the inside of you that raised Christ from the dead, that if you would get this attitude and resist the devil, he would flee from you. And when you get that determination that Carly was talking about and you just start saying, I'm going to stand. If it takes two days, you just you do what it takes until you do it. And if you stand, well, then take one step and then take the next step. And you just get in there. I'm healed and I refuse to be this way. And you know what? You'll manifest healing because it's the supernatural power of God in you. It's not God who pulls the trigger and releases the power of God. God has already placed this power on the inside of you. And it's you that pulls the trigger. It's you that releases the power of God. In the third chapter of the book of Acts, they were going into the temple and Peter and John looked at the man who was lame and they said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And they grabbed the man by the hand and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he went walking and leaping and praising God. And they said, such as I have such as I have. Did you know that gets you kicked out of nearly any church in the world today to say that you have it? Who do you think you are? Well, I'm nothing, but, you know, it says without, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Carrie used that verse this morning, and I agree with that 100%. Yeah. But I'm never without him. Right. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. Yeah. If you can just talk about my physical self, about Andrew Womack, I'm nothing, but Christ is on the inside of me and he never leaves me and therefore I have the resurrection power of God. Amen. There are some of you that because you've heard me and you've heard me give testimony about my son being raised from the dead after being dead for five hours in a morgue on a cooler and come back to life with no brain damage. You hear things like this and you think, man, you got power. If I could just come to you. But the truth is you got the exact same power. There is no difference between me and you except the renewing of my mind. That is the only difference. And I'm certainly not where I need to be. But I renewed my more, mind more than it used to be and more than some people. And so therefore I see some things happen. But the truth is every one of you, every one of you have raising from the dead power on the inside of you. And if it's not manifesting, whether it's healing or whether it's finances or emotions or whatever it is, it's not God who hasn't released that power. It's you that hasn't believed it. And the number one thing that holds people back is just being carnal. Well, I don't feel encouraged. Who cares? I don't feel faith. I don't feel bold. Man, I'm not against feelings. I'm not against them. But you know what? I enjoy them if they are what I want them to be. But if they are what I don't want them to be, I ignore them. I'll reject them. I'll actually fight against my feelings. There's lots of times that, man, I've just felt like crying, giving up and quitting and I'll start praising God and dancing, glorifying God and doing things just to resist my feelings and emotions. And somebody says, well, that's hypocritical. It just depends on who you think is you. 
Do I think that this emotional person is, is the real me? No, it's just my vehicle I get around in. I'm a new person in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I've got love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. That's who I am in the Spirit. And so if I act discouraged, if I act depressed, if I act sick, some people think, well, I'm just trying to be real. You're just being real carnal. It's what you are. You're living out of your physical, natural self. But in the spirit, man, you've got love, joy, and peace. You've got faith. You have the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And you are not a hypocrite to say that you're healed when the doctor can't verify it. Now, you could be a hypocrite if you really see yourself as a carnal person, but you just heard me preach this, and so you're going to mimic me and say it because I said it, but you don't really believe it. Well, that's hypocritical. But if you could believe what I'm saying and understand who you are in the Spirit and get to where you believe it from your heart, this is who I am. I'm a healed person. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what anybody says. I'm healed. You get like that and you believe it and you do that over a consistent period of time and it's impossible for your body to go any other way except to be healed. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. To be carnally minded is death. And again, carnal doesn't necessarily be sinful minded. You don't have to be out in sin or hating God. Just be natural. Just be going by when people say, how are you? Oh man, I hurt all over. You carnal thing. You're going to die. How are you today? Oh, the doctor says I got stage four cancer. Who cares what the doctor says? I don't give a flip what the doctor says. I couldn't care less what a doctor has to say. The point I'm making, I'm not against doctors again, but I'm just saying they're people. And when God's word tells me that I'm well, I don't care what any man tells me. It does not carry a lick of weight with me. The only thing it might do is make me think, well, you know, I need to believe God in this area. But I guarantee you, I am not going to let a doctor's word be the final word in my life. And I know some of you think I'm weird, but I think you're weird. I think you're weird for letting somebody talk you out of what Jesus has done. By his stripes, you were healed. You were healed. And so now, activate it with your words. Curse cancer. Curse sickness. Curse pain. Curse the botch. The itch. A rash. Whatever it is that you got. Curse toenail fungus. Curse it. Talk to it. Scripture says, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, Whosoever shall say to this mountain. Don't, it didn't say talk to God about your mountain. It says talk to your mountain. Say, itch in the name of Jesus. I curse you. I command you to get off my body, out of my body. And then it says death and life and start speaking life. I'm healed. I'm healed. Body, you're healed. Cancer, whatever you've done to this body, I just release the life of God and body, you're recovering. Appetite, you're coming back. And you start speaking and then you start acting. Faith without works is dead. And there's other things you can do, but I'm telling you, if you would fight, not because you're trying to get healed, but because you are healed and Satan is trying to steal from you what is rightfully yours and you aren't going to just take it laying down. And if you fought because you were healed instead of fighting to get healed, you would see a greater manifestation. There's not a person in here that's waiting on God to heal them and just looking for the magic combination that you've got to do certain things and then eventually God will heal you. God's already done his part. He's seated at the Father's right hand. He is not healing people today. You were healed. That healing power is already inside of you and you activate it. You've got to release it. Quit asking God to do what he told you to do. He told you to resist the devil and he'd flee from you. He told you to go heal the sick. He didn't tell you to pray that he would heal the sick. He says, you heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. You do it. You get up and resist the devil. I don't know how you're still sitting there. I know that there's some of you that need healing. You ought to be 
doing something. You ought to be resisting the devil. Amen. You ought to be speaking to your problem. This is good news. And you know, this is why, this is why we have the absolute confidence that when we pray with people, that it's God's will to heal every person, every time, because he's already done it. How can you doubt that he will do what he's already done? God has already healed you. We say without any reservation that God wants every one of you healed because he has already done it. That doesn't mean it's going to manifest itself in every person because the vast majority of people are just trying it, testing the waters. I've had 10 people pray for me. We're going to see if you can do anything. You'll go home sick with that attitude. But man, if you can believe and come up and say, I am, I believe, I just need you to agree with me. We are going to get rid of these hindrances and stuff. And if you approach it that way, not trying to get healed, but fighting because I am healed and I'm not going to stay sick anymore, then praise God, you can see healing manifest. And let me say one other thing. If this is brand new to you today, what I've said, you know, it may have stirred something on the inside of you, but you, you gain momentum after you believe this for a while. You get stronger in it. I'm stronger today than I was back 40 years ago. And it's because I've seen this happen and it builds your confidence and stuff. So, Father, right now, we just thank you that you've already done your part. And, Father, you've already healed us, that you placed on the inside of us the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Father, thank you that it's in us. It's not out there somewhere that we've got to pray your power down, that we've got to get rid of the demons blocking our prayers from getting up to heaven. Father, we believe that that power is already on the inside of us. And right now we rejoice. We embrace this power. Father, even before we see it manifest, even if there's no indication of it in our body, we believe what the Word of God says that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. Thank you, Father, that we were healed. We are healed. It's a done deal that it's already on the inside of us. Now we take our authority and we stand on that verse, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of our tongue. And we use our tongue right now to curse the devil, to curse sickness, to curse disease. We speak to tumors. We speak to cancers. We speak to diagnosis that have been spoken over us, that things are incurable. And we say that that's a lie. Anything that's got a name, we've got a Savior who His name is exalted above every name. And we refuse to allow anything to be incurable, anything to be impossible. We cast down those thoughts, those diagnoses. We speak to you, cancer, and command you to die. Every cancer cell in our bodies, you die right now in the name of Jesus. We release death with our words. Cancer, you are dead. You are non-productive. You will not reproduce. You will not grow. We cast you out. And Father, we release life now to flow through our bodies. That your anointing will cleanse our bodies of all of this cancer. That all of the tumors will leave. All the cancer cells will leave. We speak life that things that have been damaged, parts of our body that have been destroyed, thank you that they are being repaired. We command viruses infections to die right now in the name of Jesus. Bad bacteria, anything, any kind of a fungus, any kind of an itch, any kind of thing right now, we just curse it and command you to get out of our bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Heart disease, we curse you right now. We break these curses that have been spoken over us that it's genetic and that everybody in our families had it. We say that we are brand new. We are new creatures in Christ, that the blood of the Lord Jesus flows through us. And we do not have sickness and disease. We do not have genetic problems. We do not have heart problems. We are not accepting these things. There's some of you that have been accepting dementia, Alzheimer's, things like this. It's run in your family, and you have even made comments about it. That, well, you know, I hope I don't have this. It seems like everybody else is at it. You, you're hung by your tongue. 
quit speaking that way. There's somebody watching this on the internet. I don't know if it's in real time or maybe it could be even a, an archive, but there's somebody who's dealing with dementia in a family member and you are petrified that that same thing's gonna happen to you. This is God speaking through me to you and telling you that you are cursing yourself. Satan doesn't have the power to put that over on you unless you accept it. You reject that right now. In the name of Jesus, we cast this down. We say that this curse ended there. It is not coming to me. It's not coming to my children. We are free of this now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Man, God's just healing all kinds of people. People that have pain in your hands. I don't know. Could be something else, but arthritis, anything else. You've got pain in your hands. It's hard for you to move your hands. They're crippled up. Right here is the healing power of God. You start speaking to your hands. Put them in front of you. Look at them and talk to them. Command that pain to be gone. Command the swelling in the joints to be gone. And you start moving these hands right now. You do it. Start doing that right now in the name of Jesus. There's people being set free in your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, there's people here with bone on bone in your joints. Right now, like what Carly was talking about, start doing something. Get up and start moving. Some of you are afraid to move in certain ways because you have pain in your hips and your knees. You get up and start resisting it right now. Let this power flow. And as I'm calling these things out, you know, you need to do something. Instead of just listening, you need to do something. Faith without works is dead. So if I'm calling something out, whether it's what you have or not, you could just come forward and say, I believe I'm healed and take a step of faith. Come and act and tell these people I'm healed. I want to agree with you. And that could be your step of faith. But you need to do something. Do something. Come and let someone agree and just tell them I'm healed. Tell them what you're healed of and agree with them. Right now, ears are being opened. There's somebody here that's had a ringing in your ear constantly. Right now, this ringing in your ear stops. I command that to stop in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, stop in Jesus' name. And somebody's trying to listen to see if it's stopped. Just receive it. Don't wait on what, until it manifests. Say, if you've had ringing in your ears, say, that was me. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. And start rejoicing over it. Come and tell somebody and let them agree with you and pray with you. There's somebody here that's had sinus problems. Right now, the healing power of God is flowing through your sinuses. They're opening up. Somebody here has been dealing with a sinus headache. It's healed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Somebody here has got blockage in your uh, veins or in your arteries, some kind of a blockage. Right here is the healing power of God flowing. Don't wait until you have it verified just right now. If, you've had, if you know that you've had some kind of a blockage, in your arteries or your veins. Right now, just begin to receive it. I'm healed. It's done. Begin to rejoice and talk to those arteries. Command that blockage to be gone. Irritable bowel syndrome. Right now, God's healing that. You just receive this in the name of Jesus. Back problems are being healed right now. People that have lower back pain. You can't sit for a long time. Right now, you're being healed. This healing virtue of Jesus is flowing in your body. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, lots of people are being healed. Somebody here is being healed of uh, hemorrhoids. This has been a real problem. Right here is a healing. It's done. Right now, begin to start rejoicing. Man, believe God that you're healed of this. It's over. It's done in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's a woman here that's got a continual flow of blood. Here's the healing power of God touching you. You've had fibroid tumors. Those things are healed. I curse those fibroids in the name of Jesus and command those things to dry up, to be healed, to go away. And Father, we believe perfect restoration. Perfect restoration right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
And you know, this isn't limited to healing. This is, there's people right now that in your finances, in your emotions, in relationships, you need to start believing that you have this power, this blessing of God's already released. And you need to go to speaking who you are in Christ. You've had negative experiences. You've had bad experiences. And because of it, you've been suffering. But in Christ, you are untainted. It's not touched you. Man, your spirit, man, is...